What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. Tales of a University Kevin, part two, the conversation. Hello, I'm back with screenshots. This took me a while since this Kevin doesn't even speak well in his native language. And while translating, I couldn't make it make sense in English. I just kind of directly translated to the direct word in English. So if the grammar seems off and it doesn't make sense, that's exactly how he sounds in Spanish. Also, this isn't the whole conversation, just the parts relevant to the story I originally posted. I decided to post both the Spanish and and the English versions, so all my Spanish-speaking fellas out there who read this can have a good laugh. The cast is Kevin, I'm changing the voice from last time to more suit the personality, <laughs> and then me, Lettuce. OP, how are you? Hope good, are you busy? I needed to ask you a favor if it isn't a bother. Girl, how are you? I wanna talk to you, can you answer me? Hey yo, uh, tell me, I didn't read your message, I don't check Facebook that much, sorry. Well, first of of all, how are you? <laughs> it's okay, it happens. I'm sick. And that? I'm sick. That's about it. What do you have? Fever. Tell me what you wanted to talk about. Wow, that's strong. Haven't you taken something? Well, well. Anyway, Kevin, thanks for your concern, but right now all I want to do is sleep because I don't feel well. I don't want to come out as Benchy, but I'd be grateful if you tell me what I can do for you and do it fast. Sorry to be rude, but that's the best I can say right now. Hope you understand. Hope not to bother you, I just wanted that you as a group would help and explain me. Well, to be more precise, it's been rough for me lately and I'm going through some problems literally about university and it's about the sign-ups. You couldn't sign up? Uh, well, how do I tell you? You're probably wondering, why to tell me all this stupid thing so absurd? Eh, a little dumb? But because I've been a little disoriented and I still can't find myself, you know? All this stuff is new to me. Well, not at all, I mean, <laughs> but I have my doubts. I haven't had who explains me correctly. Would you believe that to me it was hard yesterday based on the signups? I still don't understand what you need help with. I'm not here to judge you if the signups feel hard. Uh, signups have always been hard to anyone who experiences them for the first time. It's normal, don't feel bad. Exactly, but I've been telling you you could sign up with the help of the guys. I don't understand much. Yes, yes, yes. Do you want me to explain how it works? But I tell you I didn't have the requirements needed to the sign up and the printers and frick, I didn't agree much with the sign ups being just one day. I've been through so much difficulties, literally. Like everyone, I understand you, but that was the decision of the university authorities and we can only adapt to that. Also, I was thinking, let's say, do a re sign up? I don't know. I mean, explain yourself. I understand, or had understanded, that Friday 22 was another sign up to others, those they call the sinners, the ones with the fee. Yes, uh, for the lingerers. The lingerers? Yes. Kevin, you are enrolled. You have your spot. Going in Friday is wasting your time. Because anyway, the spots for most of the classes are full, and the lingerers can only sign up in classes that are still free, which are very few. Also, you end up paying more. He he he, pardon my ignorance. Yeah, well, you lose time, money, and energy. Don't eat your head over it. But it is as I tell you. I was the last one, literally. They gave me a sucky schedule and days, and I was interested in, I don't know, in picking some of the elective subjects that caught my attention. And to that, between so many doubts, I would like for you to explain it to me. Also, I'm not okay. Maybe I'm the least suitable to tell you this, but it is this way, and no one helps me to say it that way. Again, to say it that way? Well, you're supposed to do your own schedule and arrive early to make sure you don't lose your spot and choose your schedule. Arriving last was an awful mistake. We can't do anything. Sorry, even if you ask us as student council, we can't make an exception and put you over all the people who arrived early and had to wait in line since 7 a.m. or earlier. We can't open more spots in classes because that's the teacher's job. If they won't open an extra spot, there's not an extra spot. There's just so much we can do as student representatives. Insert explanation of how the schedule system and signups work. Also the page where he could have found this info. And what are the odds that even if I'm already enrolled, there's an attempt to sign up an elective subject? Is there one at least? 
Is it possible? Yes, it sounds stupid and absurd, the question, but I had that curiosity and since I'm technically new in that, like I said. What subject is it? Don't mean to sound rude, but all of this you're telling me can only be sorted out with a teacher who can make the exception. And the teacher is probably going to tell you, your problems aren't my problem and I don't care that you're new. That's in the best case scenario. The worst is that they'll literally tell you to go eat crap. I'm telling you this so you understand how things work and that there are lines that student council can't cross. I had the bad luck of not having no one or how to guide me during the time. Yeah, I know. It's another level. Well, it's valid. I'll recommend that next time you need help with uh, something particular like signups or university stuff you don't understand, ask directly instead of phasing people with an unnecessary introduction. It's hard to take your question seriously if you start talking about whatnot. It isn't bad luck. Let's say I had that losing streak of not having the requirements and resources for the signups literally. You could could say I'm a broke dumbass who doesn't even count with the help of his family. Kevin proceeds to tell me all of the stuff that happened to him in all of his life. How none of my friends wanted to help him, how some of my friends tried to help him but he refused to do so after a while, how a friend told him he was annoying, how he doesn't have money, how he doesn't understand the info we tell him, and some BS excuses trying to guilt trip me. First, we're all broke. Half of the regular students couldn't even sign up because they couldn't afford the sign up fee. Second, specific Specifically for what you're asking help with, there's nothing that can be done. Third, you can't expect to keep living holding someone else's hand. Fourth, you can't blame people who tell you they don't like you. Fifth, I stand by my comment of you needing to be more clear on your intentions and what you want help with. Many people don't help you not because they don't want to, but because they don't understand what the hell you need. You don't need to make a show about your problems because most people don't care and can't do anything about it. There's stuff only you can do, and until you get that in your head, you won't improve as a person. I won't talk to you any longer because I believe I already answered your doubts and I feel bad. Good night. Before you leave, what? Can you clarify something for me? Is it possible for me, after being enrolled, to sign up an elective subject? Again, I repeat, is that possible? I have that doubt. No. Why? Because that's why there's a day to sign up. A digital system, limited spots on classes. Because that's how things work and you can't change it. Otherwise, it'll be a mess. Between us, by going on Friday, is there any benefit to choose classes and teachers? Is it hard? Or what? There's a system that's made to make things work and it won't be changed because of some dumbass who wants us to make an exception for him. If you read and paid attention to all the messages I've sent, then you'd notice I've already answered you about Friday. Yeah, yeah, I know, but for example, going on Friday will benefit me choosing teachers and classes? That means no? And if you want to see classes as a listener, is possible just one? Maybe? <laughs> He kept messaging me after that, but I ignored him and never talked to him again. That was the last time I tried to help him with anything. I genuinely wanted to help this guy out out of pity because he seemed so lost and lonely at the beginning, but I got tired of his BS. Oh man, I know what this guy's dealing with. I mean, not to that extent, obviously, but people just asking you over and over for obvious information that you've already given them help with, but they're just dumb and they don't want to listen to you. Well, goodness gracious, give me some. This story's called Kevin the Dishwasher. This story comes from my time in high school working as a dishwasher at a small country club in my town. Now, there were several Kevins who worked there with me, but this Kevin takes the cake. To set the stage, it should be noted that he looked, sounded, and acted just like Chunk from the Goonies. Like uncanny. We actually asked if they were related, but he didn't know what the Goonies were, so no dice on that one. Regardless, imagine Chunk doing all of this. Now, he worked for the restaurant for one month and a half. Technically three, but we'll get into that at the end. So, all of this happened in an incredibly short amount of time. On a slower night, all the dishwashers were all assigned to a different cleaning job around the restaurant. I had to organize a supply closet, one guy had to scrub the spills and gunk that was burned on the bottom of one of the stoves, Kevin just had to scrub and mop the floor of a room where we keep the trash until the end of the night. Bags would leak and it would get super gross as it sat baking in the middle of summer. Two weeks into our respective tasks, Kevin comes to me saying he can't do his job. I ask why and Kevin says the floor is made of wood, you can't scrub a wooden floor. First, yes you can scrub a wooden floor, I don't know why he would 
you'd think you can't, but the bigger issue was that it's a concrete floor, like your typical gray flat with drain in the middle and a couple of cracks in it, concrete floor. Like this is a stereotypical concrete floor that looked in no way like it was wood. Despite this, he was dead set on the fact that it was wood, couldn't be cleaned, and nothing I said would slash could dissuade him. Since he was finished with his job, he decided to go out and sit at the bar. A big no-no, until me and the other guy was done. Our boss caught him and he got yelled at and was forced to scrub the floor whether he thought he could or not. One night, about one month since he started, we were all shooting the crap and talking about the love guru, which had just come out. Someone mentioned something about Mike Myers' performance and Kevin goes, That can't be Mike Myers, he looks so young! We were so confused by this and asked what he meant. Kevin goes on to explain that Mike Myers was in Austin Powers, that movie was made in the 60s, he'd be super old. Now we're just dumbfounded and say, no, the first one came out in 1997, only 11 years prior to when this happened. But much like the floor, he was adamant that he was right. Look at how he dresses, that's all from the 60s. So we explained to him the concept of costumes in period piece movies, even though only the first like 10 minutes is in the 60s, but he still doesn't get it. What's odd is he understood when we explained the concept of just because Johnny Depp is a pirate in the movie set in the 1700s doesn't mean he's 300 years old, but couldn't comprehend this. He left that night saying, I'm gonna look into this and prove you wrong. Spoilers, he never found the proof. Now Kevin is quite possibly the worst slash laziest worker I had ever seen in my seven years of working there. See example one. So it wasn't a surprise when he was let go. Now my boss, for some reason, when he wanted to fire someone, he wouldn't actually fire them. He would just not schedule them until they got the message and not come back. Usually two weeks at most for people to get it. Now Kevin was fired shortly after the Mike Myers incident and we were all glad to see him gone. Fast forward a month and a half when Kevin walks into the kitchen happy as a clam to check his hours. He sees again, no hours for him. He looks at me and cheerily says, oh well, another week off, this is a nice vacation. I and one of the cooks break it to him that he had been fired, to which he said, no, I'm just on vacation, I guess. We explained it all to him, but again, he just couldn't understand it. We asked him if he didn't find it odd that he was working consistently multiple nights a week, and then suddenly none at all for over a month during the busy season for the club. He legit thought this was normal and that his parents, both had to be Kevin's, told him so as well. I kind of felt bad for him, so I got my boss to officially fire him so he could try to get a job elsewhere. He took it real hard. And as he left, he asked when he'd get the checks for his vacation time off. With one last confused look on his face when he was told he wouldn't, Kevin walked off into the sunset, never to be seen again. Wherever you are, Kevin, please don't. Sorry, I'm like six years too late to do a good chunk impression, so I tried my best. Not really, but... <laughs> but yeah, that guy's just helpless, man. Kevin... Kevins are just helpless. What the hell? This story's called, This is the Stupidest Person I Have Ever Met. Now, Kevin is not intellectually disabled in any way, but he might as well be. He is so goddamn stupid that I am surprised he is still alive. He is by far the dumbest person I have ever met, and his lack of mental competence never ceases to amaze me. Here is a list of some of the stupidest crap he's done. On Instagram, Kevin made two alternate accounts for the sole purpose of impersonating his friends. Long story short, he isn't friends with them anymore. Kevin takes his school laptop, paid for by the school and throws it 10 to 15 feet in the air and tries to catch it. He has been hit in the head multiple times and has cracked the side of it. Last year, Kevin had to pay $600 to replace his school laptop after he broke it doing the same thing. One of my friends went on a Boy Scout camping trip and shared a tent with Kevin. He changed buck-ass naked in front of everyone. At lunch, Kevin constantly throws his food and drinks at everybody at the table, despite everyone telling him to stop. We tried to kick him out, but to no avail. He threw an entire carton of chocolate milk on my friend's brand new sweatshirt and stained it. Kevin pirates music and movies off the internet and downloads them onto his school laptop. Kevin purposely tried to give his school laptop a virus and succeeded. Finally, for the dumbest freaking thing I have ever seen anyone do in my life, Kevin went skiing and decided that it would be a good idea to jump off the ski lift while it was moving. Kevin 
Jason is the reason why I have no hope for humanity anymore. He is one of the stupidest people on the face of the earth. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm not gonna lie, I used to go skiing a lot when I lived in Colorado, and I've always kinda wanted to jump off the ski lift because it's like, hey, there's lots of snow down there, it shouldn't hurt too bad. But of course, I've never worked up the courage or lost enough brain cells to attempt that, but I might someday. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.